all the way from Washington via Eastern Oklahoma, Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen. Hi, I'm Chris Castile with the Oklahoma and Washington Bureau. We are here in the Oklahoma City studio across the street from where the Southern Republican Leadership Conference is happening. The Congressman just introduced uh, oil man T. Boone Pickens at his birthday bash. He's speaking later this afternoon. Congressman, the first thing I wanted to, to ask you about is the rain in eastern Oklahoma. Is it causing any problems over there? Uh, yes. I mean, it's amazing uh, how fast Mother Nature can, can change things. You mm -hmm. know, we've been in droughts for um, the last seven years. Uh, I spent a big majority of my time up until three weeks ago talking about the lake levels. Uh, today, I was getting interviewed down by the lake at uh, Texoma, mm -hmm. and uh, the reporter wanted to know what what I thought about it. I said, "Mother Nature is awesome," <laughs> uh, and and fortunately, we haven't had any major structural damage. Right, a lot of farmland is being hurt. Uh, the core of engineers, as much criticism as we give them, uh, Chris, they have just done a phenomenal job. They keep our office updated constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, I say three, four times a day, we're getting reports on lake levels, letting us know what's going on. They're bringing in the stakeholders, letting people um, have a voice on what's going on, but at the same time, they can't hold back so much water and they are starting to flood downstream. Really? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they gave people plenty of warning. And so we, we like rain. We'd love it <laughs> to be a little bit more proportionate, but we're not going to turn it away. Right. I'm sure that some of the cattlemen are happy to see it. But what is there um, a, a threat that you're worried about right now? I mean, is there something immediate that you're kind of concerned about? Pine Creek, the dam on Pine Creek mm -hmm. is probably our biggest concern. On a rating for dams, you go to a 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. Pine Creek has a 1 rating. And we had been in the process, or the Corps had been in the process of making repairs to it. That is uh, that is something that's being monitored on a regular basis. Not to mention our infrastructure as a whole is pretty old yeah, in this right, state, right. and the core is monitoring the infrastructure um, literally 24/7 right now. A lot of bridges, a lot of road closures. I think our first priority, once the waters uh, start to uh, re, uh, go back down, will be getting the roads back up and going back through and looking at all the uh, all the bridges and then we're going to hopefully build a bridge a gap between uh, the state and the federal government mm -hmm. what uh, role FEMA will be playing in this okay. and, uh, and and the the communities uh, the uh, the communities the stakeholders and the core have been working together very well and, and of course with Texoma, it's supposed to work right, right. and yeah. with Texoma look we're having to pair up with Texas too <laughs> we still beat them in football I, <laughs> So let's talk about the conference a little bit. You, you, you know, you're a, you're a successful businessman. You came to Congress. This is a, you know, you're just your third year in, in Washington um, after many years building a plumbing business uh, uh, in eastern Oklahoma. And you, so you've seen all kinds of experience so far, at least uh, uh, in, in your time there. And you've got a, a, a field with very varied experience, very varied it's diverse experience. Very diverse. Um, but you've got one business person, and 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 most you know most they're uh, and 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 a neurosurgeon. But everybody else, most of their experience really does come in the public sector. What what are you looking at? What to you you know from what you've seen in Washington? I know you you know you were pretty cynical when you got up to Washington. Maybe change a little bit about you know the people up there and what you know what they may know. But is, is business experience? important to you? Do you think that a chief executive needs to have been in the business world is a, 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 or, or is a, it just such a different type of job that that's fairly irrelevant? I think it's always relevant, but what you need is leadership. Mm -hmm. a, a leader will understand what his weakest points are and he'll be able to surround himself with people that'll plug those holes. Okay. And so the first thing I'm looking at is a true leader. I'm not wanting a politician. Mm -hmm. I want someone that's going to build a bridge to gap, take the approaches like we take the approach. When I'm hiring individuals to come work for the company, I'm hiring the person based on that sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not making any other assessments other than do they have that sense of responsibility. And we're looking for a, president, uh, a presidential candidate. We need to be looking at leadership. Right. And you can pay attention to what they have accomplished in their past, who they surround themselves with, and are they willing to hire people better than they are? Mm -hmm. And that's the first, that's the most important position we need because we need someone right now to unite Does this Does that rule country. out Chris Christie? <laughs> <laughs> well, he obviously we need, had a couple of people yeah, getting, getting bad trouble. Uh, right. We need people that are, <laughs> look, you have people around you, you're going to have trouble. You, uh -huh. you can't control the individual. Right. You can hire them, but they still make their own decisions. 
but we need someone that's going to unite this country. This country mm -hmm. seems to be starting to be divided. I mean, it, it, we make assessments immediately because you got, you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. Mm -hmm. You know, we're starting to make assessments based on all types of things about us personally. We need someone that's going to bridge the gap and start and uniting us And I wonder who that one. person is, you know, because, you know, um, former President uh, George W. Bush, that was one of his campaign lines. I'm a uniter, right. not a divider. And, uh, of course, you know, after, really after the, Iraq, the invasion of Iraq, that's when the country really divided along, yes. uh, along partisan lines mainly um, about that war. And then, of course, President Obama also promised the same thing to bring. Right. We're not red states. We're not blue states. We're United States. And, and the country is just riven with, right. uh, uh, you know, uh, this partisan divide that you're talking about. So it's, it seems like it's easy to say, and everybody's going to promise that, but so hard to deliver. And it, it almost seems, and not to be cynical about it, it just seems like, really, is there someone that can, you know, unite? We know that the country, and I don't think either one of us would disagree with this, mm -hmm. the country is more divided today than it was when this president took office. Mm -hmm. So we have building blocks to build up on. Right. We can't tear it down too much farther. Mm -hmm. If we do, this country is going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking for that individual, we just want to understand, have they built something? Have they actually united people before? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to say it? Right. Words are cheap. If, if the people that that's in the race right now, they have a history. That's true. That's Pay attention true. to their history. They, they should point to, you know, they should be able to point to sure. something in their background where they actually did unite people, you know, either of different backgrounds or different viewpoints or something. And, like and that. I think that's that's maybe a lesson learned that the American people. Will, will pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm not I'm not hitting on this president too hard, but obviously he he reads a really good speech, mm -hmm. and he said a lot of great things, but his past wasn't able to match what his words were saying. Right. But yet we t we took him at his word and said, okay, because that's what a, mm -hmm. a lot of Americans do. We take you at your word. You're only as good as your word, so we're going to take you for what you what what you say. Right. But history has told us that his actions aren't lining up with what he's been able to speak. Now we need to look at their words to make sure they're matching up with their past actions and don't assume they're going to be able to change their ways. People typically at this point in their life, they're not going to change no, no, their ways. Right, right. We were talking before, before we came on about I was telling you that the, the strongest reaction that I've seen in the first day and a half of this conference has been to foreign policy issues uh, when the candidates talk about Israel, when they talk about ISIS and Iran. And I was just wondering, I mean, do you think, is that because of this particular point in time? Is that because of this particular audience? Or do you, do you feel like this really will be a presidential election about foreign policy? It really depends on what's going on at home mm -hmm. and around the world. Politics is moving constantly. Right. And that's one thing that I've realized that it, we all have a short memory and politics is the new flavor. Chris, you've been doing this a long time. <laughs> it's the new flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, this time last year, uh, this time last year is when the was that when the uh, veteran scandal first started breaking. It was. It was. Yeah. Isn't that right? to, yeah. And so that, that's right. At the time, the threat was still there. Mm -hmm. ISIS was still there. China was still being overly aggressive in the Pacific. Russia was being an absolute idiot and and being uh, and make, making irrational decisions. You had I um, you had a uh, Iran that has never stopped their rhetoric about Israel. You you still had North Korea that was, uh, you know, threatened to blow up the whole world. Mm -hmm. And so those threats were real, but something else was above it. Right. And right now, foreign policy is, is real, and it has always been real, but it's been at the top of the plate. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's there, that's what the candidates are always going to talk about. Right. When it moves, they're going to move with it, too. Mm -hmm. we can, uh, we're we, easily distracted. Yes, and, and, we're, and Chris, we're never going to get away from foreign policy. Right. Our foreign policy right now is an absolute disaster. Mm -hmm. We carry little credibility now. I mean, once the president said, this is my red line in Syria, and he backed away from it, we lost credibility in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We're not backing Israel like we should be. Israel is not just a friend. It's a nation that we should be standing with, not behind, and definitely not criticizing their ability to protect themselves. We have a president that's not doing that. Mm -hmm. So foreign policy is going to continue to be important, but we can't underestimate the importance of our own economy. Right. The math that we use to score unemployment, the math we use to score our real debt, uh, $18.1 trillion on the way they're doing their math mm -hmm. is just unheard of. That's a serious concern. 
uh, the, the unemployment rate, the slow rate of our economy. You know, when we were just going through the budget, Chris, we had to take in consideration that in the next 10 years, we're probably going to hit another recession. Mm -hmm. We're not in a good position as we were when we hit the first recession. We can't dive as deep. Right. The economy is always important, mm -hmm. creating real sustainable right. jobs. It's the economy, stupid. Right. Yes. It's a, yes, that's right. Well, and, and along those lines, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you go after this. I wanted to ask you about the trade bill um, because there are all kinds of economic and labor, all sorts of issues kind of wrapped up in these trade bills. This is, sure. you know, the Senate is, uh, is, it appears poised to pass the fast track uh, bill that will then allow the administration to do this Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership. And then it's heading to you guys. And it's expected to have more trouble in the House than it, than it did in the Senate. It took a while in the Senate. What's your take on it uh, now, and uh, you know, what, what's your own feeling about given the administration fast track for this? Well, we're actually taking away authority from from the administration. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, this trade deal I have been involved with for nearly two years now, mm -hmm. and uh, we have been we have been um, extremely involved from from almost day one. Mm -hmm. The misunderstanding by saying fast track, by giving the administration more authority, that's a misnomer. Mm -hmm. What's actually happening is right now the way the president can already negotiate trade deals. Look at what he did with Cuba. Right. Uh, he can already sit down and negotiate them, but what happens is countries don't want to sit down and negotiate with us because when it comes back after the president gets a deal with whatever country, then it comes back and it can get laid it down with all types of amendments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can have 535 amendments on it. Right. And it never ends, and then he has to take it back to the to the to the country, and right. that's why we've been in some trade negotiations for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And and remember, fast track—that's what the name you want to use. It actually started with a President Bush. Mm -hmm. it, Obama took him five years before he really wanted it. So the way it's going to work now is it's going to be very transparent. Um, we're going to once the president says he wants to enter a trade deal or, or a trade negotiation, say with Japan, right? It comes to Congress first. And we set the parameters. Okay. We say these are your areas you can negotiate with. You can only negotiate between A and M. Mm -hmm. If you go to N, we're going to pull the plug. And then once he enters those trade agreements, because all the amendments are up front, we keep a close eye on it. Once the trade negotiations are done, it is made public, not just to Congress, but to the American people for 60 days. And this is, this is one of the things about this current... Not the, not the Trade Promotion Authority Bill, but the partnership itself, is apparently you have to go into a locked room and look yes. at it now, and you can't take well, notes, or you can't take... So, so the, 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 TP, the, the TPA and TPP are two separate different right. things. Right now, the TPP, you do have to go into a locked room, and the reason why is because of some sensitivities going on with Japan. Mm -hmm. it, not us, politically, things that... They understand that if we, they don't get to trade deal with us, they're going to be beholden to China, and China is going to run the Pacific. They want to come to us. And so sensitive stuff that they have originally not ever been willing to give up, they're willing to negotiate with us. And so we, that's the reason why it's locked in. Mm -hmm. Now, once this trade deal goes through, once we pass it, then the American people the, and, and Congress will have 60 days to look at it, and then it's a straight up and down vote. No amendments. The amendments are put up front, right. remember where we say that you can only nego negotiate between A and M. Exactly. And then at the end of 60 days, we have an up or down vote in Congress. So we have, we, we set the parameters before the president goes in, and we still get to say no at the end of the deal, completely opposite the way that it, it is It sounds now. like you're ready to support at least the, the, the trade promotion authority we, we part have, of it. We've been on board on this, okay. uh, like I said, Chris, for, for two years. We have been working, uh, working not just with the language, but we have been actually working directly with Japan. We've worked with the, uh, with the administration, and, and then we have been working throughout the House uh, educating other members, because before you make a decision on this, mm -hmm. understand the situation. Be educated about it and understand how, how much the president is actually willing to give up, and then also understand that this didn't, this wasn't Obama's brainchild. This started with President Bush. It's just taken that long to get here. Yeah. Like everything in Washington. <laughs> yes, it takes a long time. That's right. <laughs> Congressman, thank you so much thank for you, your Chris. time, for coming in, Appreciate all your insights. It. And look for more on this on the, in the Oklahoman and on newsok.com.